What's up, everyone? As you may know, David and I have a deep passion for basketball and sneakers, but time away from the NBA has made us think more about why we like the shoes that we do. And even though we are brothers, it's clear that we have different body types and different foot shapes. Basically, David has a wider than average foot and I have a narrower than average foot. So we wanted to share our top 30 basketball performance sneakers of all time for wide and narrow feet. So why should you think about your foot shape when shopping for your next hoop shoe? And where can you buy them at? We'll explain. There are so many different factors to take into consideration when picking your performance basketball sneakers, and some of them are not obvious to the regular person. For example, the instep is the thickness of your foot. Do you have a wide midfoot, a wide forefoot? Do you have fallen arches or high arches? Some uppers do stretch, some do not due to being synthetic materials. How wide of a rubber base do you need on the outsole? Do you need an outrigger to prevent your ankle from rolling over? Do you feel comfortable wearing two pairs of socks to make a shoe fit better? Do you feel comfortable adding an additional insole to give you more cushioning there are definitely a lot of things to think about thank you everybody for clicking on that video but i'm really excited to tell you about our sponsor today shop tagger if you guys shop online as much as i do you guys already know that there is no way of knowing when an item you want is about to go on sale or it's about to get restocked but now with this new free browser plugin shop tagger they will actually send you a notification when your sneaker jeans jacket or even your couch goes on sale and it just works with so many stores whether that's ikea essence grail nike Foot Locker you name it. Shop Tagger is actually really fun to use. It's super easy to download. Then you'll go to the page of the item that you want. You save it onto the list. You can add a category to it and that's it. You can get notifications on your phone or web browser. And there's this new feature that helps you find coupons for you. Shop Tagger cashback is almost here as well. So cashback will allow you to earn real money automatically when you shop from top retailers. So with Shop Tagger, you'll be saving money three ways. It saves you time, it'll tell you when something goes on sale, it'll help you get the coupon, and there's cash back. Shop Tagger is the ultimate shopping plugin for your Chrome browser. If you guys are interested in getting Shop Tagger, make sure you hit that link down below to download it for free for your browser, and make sure to hit that like button. Thank you, and enjoy this video. Today, you guys, we have the Woo. ultimate basketball sneaker video, the top 30 performance basketball kicks of all time. David, you're gonna be given a list of 15 basketball shoes for wide footers, and I'm gonna be given my list of 15 basketball shoes for narrow footers, because guess what? People have different types of feet, and different types of feet are fit for different shoes. Let's, Let's go. go. Number 15 for the wide footers, I have an entire Under Armour section. The wow. Curry 7, and the uh, anatomic spawn low. Under armors are really interesting because they're usually, despite not having a lot of cushioning, set on a very wide base and they have good traction. They're so usually if, considered pretty yeah, stable shoes. And they're really, really good for court feel. I'm not a huge fan of hooping in them because for me, they just don't have enough cushioning. But I like the fit and I like the traction and I like the wide base. All right, guys, for number 15 on the narrow footers list is the Kobe 3s, RIP to Kobe. What I loved about these shoes is that the upper was very flexible and they went up very high on your ankle. So that means even if you had a narrow ankle, you were able to tie them very tight so that it just wrapped around your foot. It's also a very flexible shoe, guys. If you guys can ever get your hands on one of these, I recommend them. Number 14 for wide footers. I've got an Adidas section, Andrew. I got a Ooh. tie between the T-Mac Millennium, the Marquee Boost, and the Don Issue 1. Huge, super wide bases. I think the T-Mac Millennium has the most cushioning. I think the Don Issue 1 probably has the least. But uh, man, Andrew, if you look at how wide the base is on the Don Issue 1, I don't know if I ever seen a shoe that was that low cut with that wide of a base. It almost felt more like a CrossFit shoe than a basketball shoe. All three shoes that I just listed, whether it's the T-Mac Millennium, the Marquee Boost, or the Don Issue 1 from Adidas, you probably can get for like 90 to 100 bucks anywhere online. Number 14 on my narrow footers list is the 2016 Adidas Crazy Explosives. Guys, full length boost. They have a mesh and prime net version, but the mesh version felt just as good as the prime net and it's $20 cheaper, so check that one out. Oh, no, that one I can tell you can choke that around some skinny ankles. Yeah, if you a just lot. look at the upper. Well, as you can see, who was very skinny that wore him? Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. So if, you're, if you have a narrow foot and you're looking for a wide base, definitely check out the Crazy Explosive 2016s. 
Number 13 for wide footers, I've got the CP11 and CP12. Really soft uppers, really wide base, really good traction. I like to more work out in them, okay. uh, lift, run in them, and maybe shoot around. I wouldn't really choose it as like my full hooping shoe, but I know that people with wide feet absolutely love this shoe. For number 13 on my narrow footers list, I would say the Air Jordan 31 Lowe's in half a size down. Now, I, the reason why I say half a size down is because I really love the fit of this shoe, but it's slightly wide, but I don't think it being shorter is really going to affect the longer, narrower foot. I do think the Jordan 31 is probably the most comfortable basketball shoe ever made. Number 12 for wide footers, I think the Way of Wade 6 or the Way of Wade 7. This is a, a leaning shoe, not easy to find in person in the US, but you can order it online from a number of sites. I mean, if you look at the way Dwayne Wade is built, you can assume that his shoes are built on a wide base. Right. I think if you look at a lot of the guards that I'm gonna you're, I'm gonna have on this all-time wide shoe list, you're gonna see Westbrook, Dame Lillard, D. -D Wade, you're gonna see power guards, and if you look at their bodies, they are just like really sturdy NFL type bodies. I actually think the Way of Wade 6, if you are able to get it, is great for wide footers because it has a knit upper. Knit upper is great for wide footers because it can kind of expand to how wide your foot is. And then just look at the base. The base is so wide. Coming up at number 12, I got the Kobe Mamba Focus. I think, uh any, basically any Kobe shoe is gonna be designed for people with more narrow feet. I think any shoe of the Kobe line that pretty much has the Kobe brand in it is going to be made for slimmer feet. But basically any Kobe is gonna be flexible enough where you can tie it tight around your foot. It's gonna fit kind of like a soccer cleat. No, nobody's ever gonna say that a Kobe is too loose. Coming in at number 11, my favorite shoe at this spot is the Zoom Chi P Retro. Whether a shoe is good for wide footers or not, to me, is really based off the shape of the insole, the shape of the sole. To me, I actually really prefer really clamped on shoes, whether that's with a shroud, with a zipper, or in the case of the Zoom GP, a ratchet mechanism. Coming up at number 11 on narrow footers, again, I do have to go with the Kobe 4 Pro Tros. The reason why I particularly like this shoe is not really because of the cushioning, but because for a lot of narrow footed people, they also have narrow ankles. And this one really has a great heel counter lock in. The cushioning that goes around the ankle is really big. So when you tie it tight, it just locks your whole foot in. And to me for narrow footers, lockdown is like the number one issue. At number 10, I have the LeBron 15 low. Again, guys, you see the theme here. Cushioning, knit uppers, uh, wide bases. The only thing here is I would say the midfoot is a little bit narrow, but because it's a knit, it really allows it to expand right there. I think the key about the LeBron 15 low is that it has a really curved cupped outsole. Heel to toe transition is crazy. And it's almost built like a Skechers booty pop. Oh, <laughs> those, uh... What are those called? The poppers, no. the booty poppers. It's something else. Hello? Booty popper. Yeah, the ones that are supposed to tone your butt. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah, yeah. built like that because it has such a rocking motion. Having LeBron's on your list make a lot of sense because if you look at LeBron, I mean, he's a big guy. So probably his foot is a little bit wider than usual. Coming in at number 10 for narrow footers, you got the Nike PG 2.5s with the strap, and you can actually get these still in stores right now on sale for about 100 bucks on a lot of different sites. I would say the narrow foot is like the PG series. Yes. If you look at PG, I mean, that's a skinny guy. If you have a narrow foot, you're gonna wanna look for shoes that have a midfoot strap. Those things are actually going to help a lot. Um, I know back in the day, some people used to feel like, oh, the old straps, they didn't do anything, but no, on the PGs, they definitely do. Coming in at number nine for wide footers, I've got a shoe you can get right now for $60 that Woo! I think everybody's gonna like. Wow. The Dame 5 is an amazing shoe with the bounce cushioning. In terms of how responsive it is and the kickback it gives you, yeah. uh, you know, you wanna feel that responsiveness in the cushioning. You don't wanna feel the pillowiness. I think the Dame 5 is such an underrated shoe. At number nine, I got the Kobe AD Lowe's. Now, a lot of Kobe ADs have come out since then, but I'm talking about the first ones. Guys, this is a great shoe, especially for narrow footers. One thing about the Kobe AD Lowe's, Andrew, for a bigger guy, because I've tried those on too, no cushioning. If you happen to be a heavier wide footer, that cushioning might not be sufficient enough. Eight for heavy guys. This is, I believe, the only Kobe you're gonna see on this list. Okay. The Kobe One Pro Tro from Nike. Yes. This has a full length zoom. 
uh, especially get the ones with the leather upper so they can expand a little bit more versus the other materials. Why I think the Pro Tour ones work better for wide footers than narrow footers is because the toe box is really wide and also that ankle area, you're not really able to tighten it up. That's more for wider ankles. You're not gonna really feel secure if you have a slim ankle. But man, that is an amazing shoe. Like I said, Nike, let's, just fig let's figure something out. Let's keep Kobe's legacy alive by keeping the sneaker line available. Coming in at number eight, one of the only pairs of LeBrons that you're gonna see on my list is the LeBron Zoom Soldier Sixes. Now, obviously you guys know that the Soldier line for LeBrons, uh, they were built on a more narrow base, and often sometimes LeBron did switch into those shoes in the middle of a game. Again, one of the things you'll see in this shoe is the big midfoot strap. This one does not come loose. It's not one of those dinky ones that every time you bend your foot or take a step, it's gonna pop off when you try to wrap it too tight. Nah, that thing was long. It was like straight wrapping across the foot. Coming in at number seven for the wide footers, I've got the Zoom Penny 2 wow. from Nike. You're taking it a, back. I'm taking it back, but they did retro this, I believe, already two times. Also, the Penny 2s, they have a lot of cushioning on the side. So maybe if you're a narrow footer, it could work out because there was so much like pillowy space. Yeah, you got a max airbag in the heel. You got a gigantic Zoom unit in the front and um, just built on a really wide base. And it was really interesting because Anthony Hardaway, Penny Hardaway, was very skinny, but his shoes generally are pretty wide. Number seven for narrow footers, I got the Under Armour Clutch Fit Drive Ones. Uh, I love this shoe. It kind of reminds me of the Kobe threes, as in that the material is completely flexible. It wraps around your foot. It goes very high up around your ankle. You're able to tie it very tight. And the Micro G cushioning implementation was amazing in these. The traction is great, guys. This is uh, Steph Curry was wearing these on his rise. I, I still think that this has got to be one of Under Armour's best shoes ever. This is one of their top shoes. And guess what, guys? You can still get this shoe online on various websites. Even I saw them on Walmart.com for like 75 oh. bucks. Number six, I've got the Zoom GP glove. Uh, I love the shoes that wrap them out of my foot. They've got the monkey paw structure mm -hmm. on the right. I do think it's really important for guys with wide feet to not roll their ankles because typically guys with wider feet, seven out of 10 times are heavier. A rolled ankle could be horrible. Right. You know, if I'm just playing indoors and I know that it's only gonna last me like 20, 30 games, that is an amazing shoe. That is a stable, solid shoe. Even as a narrow footer, I put them on and maybe my foot might move around a little bit more on the inside than I want, but like, I, I cannot move my foot back and forth. Like, it is not going to get twisted. Coming in at number six, man, it's another Kobe, but it's the Kobe AD Mid. A lot of people in the NBA wore it. It's a very simple shoe, very light, has lunar lawn cushioning all throughout. Guys, it is a really, really good shoe, and uh, I had a lot of fun playing in them. I would say I did have to choke it pretty tight, but given the material, it allowed me to tie it tight. You guys, we are entering our own personal top five, top 30 shoes Woo of all time. I've got the LeBron 10. Wow, David, so I was compiling clips of you playing in the LeBron 10, and let me tell you, there are a lot of clips <laughs> of you playing in the LeBron 10s. All right, you guys. You hooked look. in these for years. I wanna say I've had 10 pairs, but I, I really like the regular version of LeBron 10 for myself, even though the cushion is a little bit more mushy. I don't think there's a shoe that gives you more energy return, maybe ever, than the LeBron 10. I do think you gotta be muscular to wear these because I tried to wear your LeBron 10s before, and although I could tell why you liked them, man, I felt I, like I was wearing a boot. I think for big guys, stiff uppers, it's not uh, restricting to us, it's supportive. Right. Whereas for skinnier, narrow-footed guys, the stiff uppers, they just seem restrictive. Number five on my list for narrow footers, this is a shoe that you can still get, is the PG-1. Wow. My goodness. This, this is considered this, a cult classic. One of, one of the best basketball shoes of all time. I gotta say, yeah. guys, you could feel the four-foot cushioning. You could feel the four-foot zoom. It had a mid-foot strap. It was low. It was... It was just stable. You know how I know shoes are good for narrow footers is when I can wear one pair of like regular thick socks and it fits well. But if I have to double up and I have to like, you know, do all these tricks to kind of make up right. for wear the filling super, space. Su wear the super thick elite socks. Yeah, then, then I already know it's not necessarily made for me. 
Coming in at number four, Andrew, Woo. I've got the Dame 2 from Adidas. Probably the greatest $110 Adidas shoe of all time. Somehow, some implementation of the bounce cushioning made it feel like it was almost like full length zoom. Wow. And just the fit on it, and uh, it was good for wide footers because they had you know different materials on the uppers. I think the PG1, you feel a certain magic when you wear it. The Dame 2, you feel a certain magic when you wear it. And number four on my narrow footers list is the Kobe 9 Lows. My goodness, I don't, wow. I do not know how many friends told me that they could jump higher in these. I almost, I was throwing down dunks with a little ball in these at my, you know, at my peak. Wow. And particularly the engineered mesh version. Now, this is a shoe that when you put it on, it's super light. And the Lunar Lawn, I don't know why, it was, it's just implemented in a really bouncy way in these shoes. It is. I would say the traction on the Kobe 9s might be an 11 out of 10, too. You could argue that the traction on the Kobe 9s, Andrew, is too good. Yeah. And I would say a lot of dunkers actually like this shoe. A lot of slim dunkers really like this shoe. And I almost threw down a dunk in these. Almost. Like a dunk to small ball. Coming in at number three, woo, woo. I've got the Russell Westbrook Why Not Zero One, both wow. the mid and the low. The Why Not series, Andrew, is one of the best Jordan performance series ever. Like, I don't know how far yeah. it's gonna go. It might stop at like six or something like that, but I would not be surprised if those six go down in history as some of the strongest shoe per shoe line in terms of for uh, performance for power guard. Well, if you look at how Russell Westbrook plays, he's gonna need some very sturdy shoes with great cushioning, and that's what the Why Not series really provides. I don't know if there is a shoe that is more supportive that allows you to do really hard cuts at the, at, without any risk of twisting your ankle. Did it make you wanna attack the rim like Westbrook? As best that I could. And number three for narrow footers. This is one of the best basketball shoes you can get right now, is the Kyrie Sixes. The lockdown is crazy, especially for a narrow footer. Like I said, I don't have to wear any sort of special socks. They're zoom turbo, so that means the zoom is very dense, but it's very low to the ground. There's great traction, there's great lockdown. I feel like Kyrie in these. I wanna just do like three, triple behind the backs and then a spin off and then do like a fade away. That's what I feel like doing. I would say, in a way, one of really the best looking performance shoes of all time too. Dog, my top three picks, I'm saying, they're all on sale right now and you gotta get all these top three shoes that I'm about to name. The Kyrie 6 is definitely one of them. You can get them for $95 on Nike.com right now and many other sites. Coming in at number two. Woo! This is another shoe I've probably had at least 10 pairs of. Andrew, the Jordan 31 mid. This is a must cop for people with wide feet. I don't care about the traction. A lot of people really complain that the traction on the Jordan 31 is very iffy. But to me, if you have really wide feet and you're really heavy, you're not moving that quick like Kyrie where the, the you know, the tr flaws in the traction are gonna be exacerbated. Well, David, let me tell you this. You set a league record with seven threes in one game in these. Everybody always says that. The Jordan 31 mid, if it was not for the traction would be a top five shoe in history. Guys, trust me, if you're a wide footer, it's the best fit you'll ever get. Wow, and that's only number two. All right, coming in at number two for me, for narrow footers, guys, this is a must cop. It is the Harden 3 with full length boost. Damn, I had like six pairs of these. Um, I loved them all. Uh, they have this midfoot band that some people argue whether it helps or not. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it helps. Um, it's great for staying low to the ground, super comfortable. I could play like six, seven, eight games in them without my legs getting tired. It was like an ultra boost basketball. It was like all the best things you like about the ultra boost running shoe, but really put into a basketball shoe. It was low to the ground, you could feel the boost. It was very stable. It was great for making moves left to right. If I had to wear just one shoe on my feet, 24-7, it would be the Harden 3. Wow. Like, it's the best to just walk around in. All right, you guys, I have arrived at my number one pick for wide footers of all time. David, number one, what, is, what does being number one mean? Two. If you are a wide footer right now and you want to spend the money, there is no better shoe that you can get than the Jordan 34. Woo it's the newest Jordan, Zion's wearing it, Luca's wearing it. I don't think it's surprising to pick a 2020 shoe as the greatest shoe of all time. 
To me, shoe tech is very similar to car tech. It's always getting better. These companies pour millions and millions and millions of dollars of R&D research every year. And the Jordan 34 is something unlike I've ever seen before. It reminds me of a Ferrari. Uh, it's, I've heard it be compared to a Ferrari before because the engine is so strong, but it's so, but the frame is so lightweight. So if you look at the Jordan 34, the whole forefoot is a zoom unit. Mm -hmm. It's not a cage zoom unit. It's just the entire forefoot is a gigantic zoom unit. I've never felt a shoe that propelled me forward in my foot strike more than the Jordan, Jordan 34. And it's light. Yeah, lightweight. It's like a fighter jet but it's got incredible cushioning, it's got incredible traction, it's got support. It really has zero weaknesses. Would you say it's like a nine out of 10 on everything? Yeah. I just think the Jordan 34 to me is really the progression of high-end basketball shoes moving forward. Of course, the cushion's important, the traction's important. These are all conventional things. We are now stepping into a new tier, Andrew, where the shoes are going to be helping you move. Jordan brand is making the best shoes and basketball apparel in the world right now, bar none. Okay, so for my number one shoe, guys, there is just nothing better right now for a narrow foot than, of course, KD. It's the KD12s right now. Guys, the KD12s, for the price point, $130, with double stack Zoom Air in the heel, full length Zoom Air strobo right underneath your foot, great traction, great stability, solid comfort. I think, in my opinion, for narrow footers, it ranks nine out of 10 on all those aspects. The reason why they segment the full length zoom for skinny guys is for increased flexibility so that the zoom pack can kind of bend at these parts in ways that maybe for the bigger zoom packs, they don't. I don't even think wide footers honestly can fit the KD12. Andrew, just, just show this part. This midsole that rides up, your foot sits beneath this. For me, my foot is busting out of this to the point where it's incredibly uncomfortable. Guys, I've just ordered a pair of the KD-13s. I'm waiting for them to come, but I'm really excited about them. But so, basically right now, you cannot go yeah. wrong with the KD-12s and they are gonna be on sale for like the entire next year and a half. So definitely get a pair. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that performance basketball sneaker video. In the comment section below, please let us know one shoe we left off the list. It's gotta be one shoe for the wide footers and one shoe for the narrow footers. And the best answer is gonna get a $25 gift card and pinned at the top. And also let us know in the comments below if you guys wanna see another sneaker video and what we should make it about. Because you know what, man? Just missing the NBA right now, missing all sports, period. It just really got us reminiscing and just really doing deep dives into sneakers. All right, guys, make sure you hit that like button, click subscribe, turn on your notifications, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.